Hi everyone. Welcome back to my next video in my Module Federation micro front end series. In the video today, I'll be covering a new Module Federation runtime package, how to write a very simple plugin that'll log out the share map within Federation, and how I integrated that into RS Pack. The video today is a very simple demonstration of how to use the new plugin and you know kind of lifecycle hook functionality that exists within module federation 1.5 it is not meant to be an advanced use case there are lots of different examples that are out there um, on the the official examples repo so you can go into the repo you could see cases of fallbacks for when a remote fails to load uh, resolving shares from different shared modules from different sources, as well as the, the documentation that's on the official repo. As always, if you like the video and you like the content, please like and subscribe for more videos in the future as I kind of continue doing videos um, about the micro front end and module federation topic. So let's start with a little bit of background on the module federation runtime package. So this is a new package for version 1.5. I am using it within RS Pack. The module federation runtime is a kind of abstraction and a higher level kind of layer within the federation uh, framework, if you will, uh, that basically allows you to do different things within federation that may have been previously done through going through like different webpack objects, things on the window, some things out of the utilities project. This is kind of giving you a nice interface to it. And uh, it's still very early on in development, but there's just been a lot of really exciting developments in 1.5. So you can see the very first uh, kind of snippet here in the official documentation is the init function. So here you'll be kind of registering your remotes. Uh, if you were previously doing this, let's say in your build package, you can kind of move these up to here. And you know, essentially you'll see this uh, kind of alias and, and name field, the entry field of giving it your remote entry URL. One of the things I wish that I could do with this, kind of just initially looking at it, is be able to kind of dynamically load these in and not kind of specify this um, right up front. The one thing you just want to be aware of is that you want to kind of put this in a spot in your application that's relatively safe, where you're not kind of initializing maybe down, you know, after you've loaded you know, a number of remotes and you're kind of calling in it again and you're, you know, possibly overriding and kind of um, reinstantiating the state within, you know, the, the runtime itself. So that's just one thing to be aware. Uh, once you do kind of go through the init function, you'll see this load remote here. And a lot of this is kind of called out in the documentation here. Uh, load remote is basically a replacement of, you know, what you've seen uh, maybe previously if you're using dynamic remotes in the utilities package. This is now kind of bundled with the runtime and it's made to work kind of in conjunction with the init function, right? Initializing the runtime. You'll see init supports things like, you know, the shared package configuration. You know, you could still do this through your RS pack or your Webpack plugin and uh, that will still kind of work as you expect. The interesting part in 1.5 is all of the new um, life cycle, you know, plugin functions that you can hook into. Now, a lot of them are called out here under kind of the hook section, not all of them, but a lot of them. So, you know, you'll have a number of these that you can access through a plugin. So what's nice here is they show you, you know, here's a plugin and then they show you kind of, obviously it's not doing anything here, but they show you, you know, how you would write one, how you, you know, kind of call it, you know, this is through the init function. I'm going to be doing it today just through my RS pack configuration. So let's kind of jump over to that project here. Now, from my previous videos, I'm using the same uh, micro front end project here. So it's a mono repo and it's got a host application uh, called host and it's got a remote application. It's called products. The folder name's app two, but it's called products. So when I go into this application, I'm going to go into my bootstrap file, which you're, you're probably familiar from most, you know, federation setups, right? You've got that async boundary. Uh, I'm calling that init function, and this is coming off the runtime. So the runtime here is essentially, you know, what you see in that documentation, right? I've got my host here, which is, you know, my application, and I've got my remotes, 
here's my URL. A again, you could you could register this also within the RS pack config, but I want to use the lo load remote functionality. So I am initializing it here uh, through the code. And, um, you know, basically here you can see my my products remote loaded. I've got, you know, the name, I've got the alias for it, and I've got a URL. So this is a, just a very simple setup. It's not meant to kind of deep dive into setting everything up and, um, you know, all of the kind of ins and outs of what is in the new kind of Federation runtime here. Once I configure my new remotes here, it's basically ready for me to go in and import this module, right? So if I go in, for me, it's imported here. Let's see, under my home component. And you'll see here that I'm importing this uh, load remote. And load remote is basically just returning an object out. It's a promise, right? So I'm still lap wrapping it in React Lazy, I'm still putting it in suspense. And I'm just calling my alias slash my module name. And this is pretty much what would be there if you were using the previous utilities, you know, dynamic remote loading method, um, or if you were doing it, you know, just um, through the build time configuration, and you were just kind of creating, you know, your own uh, module uh, alias here, or, or declaration, if you're using TypeScript, not much really changes here. It's kind of just swapping out the method call. You see right now, I'm just kind of ignoring the types for it. Um, you know, there's, um, the native federation types package that offers the TypeScript support that you can use with RS pack today. So if you wanted to, you could uh, assert the right type here. It's definitely possible. Okay, so now that the remote is loaded, right, we could go over to our application and we could take a look at what it looks like. It's the same application as before. And you'll notice here that um, I have this share monitor plugin and it's logging something to the console. So if we go into the host application, I go into RS pack, you'll see I have a runtime plugin here. And instead of doing this through the init call, like it shows you in the documentation, I'm just doing it here. I am pulling in my share monitor plugin. So if I open that up, you'll see it's a very simple object and it's returning this Federation runtime plugin. And the Federation Runtime plugin, again, is just coming from the runtime package. And I am just hooking into the on load uh, lifecycle event. And the nice thing here is that you can hook into whichever ones you want, right? You don't have to hook into all of them. So if I go into their official documentation and I search on load, I can come down here and see triggered once a federated module is loaded, allowing access and modification to the exports of the loaded file. Now, for my use case, I actually don't really care about kind of the like capabilities, right? I don't care about what I could do with it. There's so much you could do with all of the various different hooks. Um, really, there's just a lot of possibilities here. It's very flexible. In my case, my usage here is, well, I have a federated application. My application has a number of remotes. They all share modules. They share different modules in different versions. My remotes are loaded dynamically, so they're maybe being retrieved from like a configuration service. When I return them from the configuration service, I'm going to do it one time, then I'm going to do my initialized call in the runtime. And those URLs are going to be, you know, locked in, right? Well, if I reload the page or when I push out a new module through my configuration service, those share scopes change, right? So in my host application here, this is what my kind of shared contract looks like. Here's the packages, here's the versions, here's you know information about how they should be shared. And if I go over to app two, it's got the same, you know, setup here. But some of these packages, <laughs> React Router DOM is definitely not 18.2, but some of these packages, they they definitely change, right? You know, sometimes you might have, um, you know, a number of different remotes that are, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily maintained anymore. You know, maybe it's just legacy code that you have out there. Maybe there's new development going on and those versions are changing. Maybe you've got a team that just loves the version selectors and you're getting, you know, lots of potential different versions. So maybe things aren't just, you know, totally compatible anymore. 
there's a lot of different reasons why things may drift and within you know some of the federation logic it will match things up to a certain extent but it's not always perfect right there are cases where things will not share properly how do you know well manual testing of it isn't necessarily great right because you need to test in an environment where things are as production like as possible right so you can't necessarily just run everything locally it might be different from what's deployed out there and i think this share monitor plugin idea is a pretty good one because you can hook into whatever your logging system may be log this out there for kind of that you know observability or forensic value to say okay i've got some share scope and uh, again i'll just kind of refresh here and i want to kind of look and see as a remote loads what does it look like does it start to fragment right so i'm going to look at react and um, so this is coming from the plugin i'm just logging that share scope map object i've got the default scope uh, so this has kind of always been in, you know, Federation, everything's under some default scope. And I've got React, and you can see here under these packages, I've got the version, right? So in this version key, I've got who it's from, which is the host. I've got use in, which lists the modules that are using this particular module. And now really easy, I can come in here and I can say, well, I've got these different modules that I'm sharing and I know a remote has loaded and I can hook into you know whichever remote that was um the remote that's actually in context within that hook to me isn't that valuable because I could just log the full map and I can kind of you know reduce this down map it down to you know here's a number of libraries here's the version who loaded it and then who's using it and then you could kind of start to see that fragmentation and you can use that to kind of go back and refine, you know, those sharing rules, those packages, and kind of troubleshoot why you're not getting that kind of full benefit or the, that expected, you know, kind of, um, you know, runtime singleton logic um, or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, right? So this is a very, very, very simple intro to one of these plugins. I think that still has a lot of value and it's, you know, now very easy um, compared to what it was uh, with with 1.0 to hook into the lifecycle, these events, do something very, very simple, but get, you know, lots of value out of it very quickly. And you could go and again, look at the examples. You could see more advanced use cases out of here and you're not, you know, going through Webpack objects and you know, kind of undocumented territory, you know, everything is, um, you know, nicely exposed within these plugins. You've got, you know, the, the concept of the runtime and all of those various pieces here that are kind of rolled up to this, you know, kind of abstraction layer that lets you kind of go in here and really see kind of what's happening. Um, and this is just, you know, still kind of an early release, right? These are things that are still being actively worked on. And there's probably just, you know, more and more enhancements as the future goes on. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Again, it's a simple demonstration of writing a custom plugin, but that plugin is now, you know, 10 times easier to do what you want to do versus what it was with 1.0. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.